You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 42. Wow, guys, here we are at the end of our second season of the podcast, and I am just so very thankful. I would have never imagined when I launched this in February of this year just how God was going to use it in mighty ways. I have grown through the process of learning how to even start a podcast, pushing past personal comfort zones, and connecting with other apostolic women who really have enriched my life so very, very much. And I hope you can say the same. In our final episode of the year, I talk to Nuggles CEO and friend Chantel Rogers. Nuggles just happens to be our podcast sponsor this season, and I want to thank them for all their support. I wanted to shine the spotlight on the beautiful creative soul behind the brand, and so I couldn't think of a better person to end 2019 with. As Chantel shares about overcoming fear, doubt, and grief in both business and through an unexpected miscarriage, we dive deep into a range of topics like blessing others, seasons of life, incorporating creativity as creative mamas, and of course, the importance of cheering other ladies on. Guys, this episode has all the feels and so much Jesus. Please enjoy our last episode of 2019. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting all things Hello Awesome. Season 3 is coming, guys. It is already in the works with more incredible interviews that are already recorded and more on the way coming to you in February of 2020. So make sure you are subscribed to the podcast on iTunes and stay connected on Instagram at Hello Awesome Ministries. All right, my sweet friends, have a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Here is episode number 42 that I am calling Taking a Risk with Chantel Rogers. You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast. I'm JC, and this is the place where we get real, sharing truthful insights that will encourage us to make intentional choices in both life and business. I want to start conversations that not many young Christians today are having. Will you join me? Keeping great content and products coming takes not only time, but money. This got me thinking, how can I keep doing what I love, creating stuff you love, while also building a special program just for Hello Awesome's most loved supporters? Enter in Patreon. Patreon is an amazing website where I have put together an exclusive reward membership system. For as low as $2 a month, I will exchange your financial contribution with incredible benefits not found anywhere else. This includes bonus podcast episodes that haven't even been released yet, audio content, free digital copies of all of my books, current and future, beautiful phone wallpapers, an official Hello Awesome tote bag, and so much more. Just go to patreon.com backslash Hello Awesome. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com backslash Hello Awesome to become a Hello Awesome Patreon today or click the link in the show notes. I appreciate you so much. And just giving a little bit to Hello Awesome, you will receive so much exclusive content from yours truly. One more thing. Did you know my books, The Palace Keepers and The Glitter Effect, are available as an ebook and paperback on Amazon? That's right. Just search the titles and add them to your next Amazon order, and you can actually have one of my books in your hands in just a few days. Your support means the world to me. It really fills my heart and it financially supports current and future Hello Awesome projects. Head to the show notes for a direct link to my Amazon author bio for more details. I am pleased to announce that the Hello Awesome podcast is sponsored by the modest fashion clothing brand Nuggles. Aiming to always provide beautiful, comfortable, and affordable apparel, Nuggles desires every lady to embrace modesty with style. You don't have to break the bank or sacrifice that morning latte when you shop with Nuggles. In fact, Hello Awesome listeners can use the 10% off exclusive discount code by using HelloAwesome10 during checkout. 
Go to nuggles.us to browse their full collection today. Again, that's N-U-G-G-L-E-S dot U-S to shop high quality products to add to your modest wardrobe right now. Hey guys, we are back here on the Hello Awesome podcast. And today I will be chatting with the mama boss herself, Chantel Rogers. She is the founder of the modest clothing company, Nuggles. Chantel, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Why don't you take a minute to share with everybody who you are and what you do? Well, thank you, JC, for having me. First off, I really am very honored that you asked me to come on your podcast. Like you said, my name is Chantel, and I have several ways that I can identify myself to you. First and foremost, because of the season of life I'm in right now, I am a mother. Um, We have three children. The oldest is seven and the youngest is one. And they are a 24-7 full-time overtime job. I'm also a wife. My husband and I have been married for almost 10 years. And he is very opposite of me. And so we complement each other very well. I'm also a sister and a daughter. And I will say that I wouldn't be anything I am today without the love and the support that I have received from my family over the years. Um, Aside from that, as far as career, I am a registered nurse and I have had my associate's degree since 2007 and I've worked in a hospital setting for 10 of the 12 years that I've had that license. It's always been one of my goals to go back to school and to finish my education And I did that last year. I got my bachelor's degree. I graduated last summer with that. And I was actually on a pathway to complete a nurse practitioner program when we found out we were expecting the youngest. So that got put on hold for a while. And then I am a business owner as well. My husband and I own a company that we started called Rogers Manufacturing LLC which most people don't know us by that name. They know us by the name of Nuggles. Wow, that's really incredible. I didn't realize that you were a registered nurse. That is so awesome. And congratulations. That is such an accomplishment. Well, thank you. So Nuggles, yes, that's the name that we all have heard um, around on Instagram. We've seen a lot of influencers wearing your clothes or we've seen you at conferences throughout the nation. And I want to know, obviously... Where did that name come from? Where did Nuggles come from? This is such a special memory for me. So when we started our business, um, it kind of started out as a hobby. I was um, making clothing for my little girl. And um, I started getting requests from other people to make clothing, little girls clothing for them too. And so after a lot of prayer, a lot of counsel and thinking about it and researching, we decided to go ahead and start our business. But we had such a hard time coming up with the name. We wanted something that was unique, but we couldn't think of what it was. And like, we, I'm, I'm not kidding. We went through, I don't know how many names. And then one day my daughter came up to me. Um, she was a little over one at the time. So she wasn't talking very well. And she said, mama, I want to nuggle with you. And it was her way of trying to say snuggle, but it came out as nuggle. And it was one of those moments when I was like, that's it. Like, that's what we want to call this, um, this clothing business that we want to start for little girls. We had envisioned like a product, or at least I had for little girls that was beautiful, but had the right, right price point, but was also comfy. And so this name, when she said it was like, oh, that's it. If I would have known then that we would be manufacturing ladies apparel as well, (laughs) I probably wouldn't have picked that because um, Mm -hmm. nuggles for an adult clothing line seems kind of silly, but that's (laughs) why today we have the clothing business for ladies called nuggles. (laughs) That's awesome. I love that. You can always count on kids to make you giggle, really. (laughs) I love that. And it's such a special memory. And yeah, I can see how you envisioned it to be a certain way. And then it kind of evolves on its own, you know? Yeah, it did. 
So can you share with me your love for sewing? Because you said you were sewing clothes before. Where did that come from? Did you have a creative childhood and you learned how to sew then? So this is another very special memory to me. I had very wonderful parents growing up and I had very wonderful grandparents as well, but for different reasons, they weren't able to be super involved in my life or my sister's lives. And so we did have a great grandma, which was my dad's grandma that lived near us. And she kind of took that place of a grandparent a lot of times. Um, we would go over to her house and I have so many memories of being over there and she would take us into her sewing room and she'd let us do all these like um, little sewing crafts and um, just different crafts that were so neat as a little kid for us to do. Um, they weren't always like a sewing project. Like one of them was um, like this little dog that had these legs that she attached to it. So yes, it was a very creative part of our childhood that I remember. And even growing up when I was a little bit older, I would still go over there. Like I remember probably in my teenage years going over there. I don't remember my sisters going with me a lot when we were older, but I would go over there and I would get so excited. It was like, we're, I'm going to go to grandma's house and, and I'm going to sew. And she would literally take the time to like sit right behind me and like guide my hand and, and show me how to do different things at the time. Like I appreciated it and I loved it. Um, but I don't think that everything she necessarily taught me stuck, but later on in life, like when I would try to go back and do a skill, it was kind of vaguely there. And so it was a little easier for me. And also in hindsight, like looking at it, as an adult now, like I appreciated it as a kid, but now as an adult, just knowing how much effort and time and even love that goes into helping someone else learn something, I am so thankful, even more so today, that I had that opportunity with her. Aside from that, I don't really remember a whole lot of creative um Things that we did when we were children, my mom had three of us girls and we we're all really close in age. And so I know she was running around like crazy because that's what I do these days. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I don't remember a lot that way. I do have a dad who is super creative and he's very artistic. He owns um, a decorative painting business and he does a lot of things like as far as expressions of creativity, like artist work and stuff like that. So I feel like his expression of his creativity is very different from what mine is. But I sometimes think that I got some of my creativity from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely awesome now when you look back and you think of your childhood memories and see how it's kind of helped you evolve as an adult. I have a creative aunt and I remember when she used to watch us and she was sewing and she was baking and she was painting or drawing or something. And I remember just loving being in that kind of environment. So I definitely understand how that can influence you and how that still influences you as you're an adult. It, it does. There's something like, you know, this JC, there's something about when you're being creative, like it just, it's something that flows out of your heart and your mind. Like there's no feeling quite like it. And, mm -hmm. and to be around someone like that, why they were doing that, like it was impacting as a child. Yeah. So obviously you've had some creativity in your background. So walk me through what was going through your mind when you started realizing that you could create a modest clothing business. Is that something that you've always kind of thought your business was going to be? when you were planning it out? No, our business has completely evolved from what I had envisioned. But when we were starting our business and even through the process of trying to get our business up off the ground, it's been a roller coaster of feelings and emotions, like literally mountaintop emotions where you are on top of the world and, and just the joy, the happiness, the anticipation, like the optimism that you feel about your business. 
But hand in hand with that, you also have all these negative emotions and feelings that you experience, the fear, the sadness, the stress, the insecurities, the doubt. And I think a lot of times as an entrepreneur, and especially when you're starting something new and you've never done it before, you think that those emotions, especially those negative ones, are unique to you and no one else has ever experienced them. And this is a lie because everyone who starts something like this is going to experience to a certain degree all of these emotions and feelings. And so you have to put that aside and say, you know what, that's everyone, everyone experiences this. There were three specific emotions as far as negative emotions and feelings that I really had to work to overcome. I was going to talk a little bit more about them in depth. Fear was something very specific that I had to deal with. Now, initially, when we were starting our business, we started out custom sewing. So there is not a lot of risk and overhead with that because it's so small. You, you don't have that worry that you're going to lose a lot because if it's one order, it's not that big of a deal. But when we got ready to start manufacturing, there was a huge issue with fear there. So mm-hmm. we had a hard time trying to find a manufacturer. We found several people who, would say, who said that they would help us and we would pay money. We paid money to several different ones. I don't remember at this time how many it was. And they promised us a product or a service. And we would wait and wait and wait. And we wouldn't get what we were promised. And we lost that money. And during this time that we were starting our business, I quit my job at the hospital because I'm trying to focus on starting this business and get it off the ground. And also during this time, my husband was working in Christian education. And There was a lot of wonderful things about him working there, but it didn't pay very well. (laughs) And so we're starting, trying to start this business and I'm not making the money I used to, and he's not making very good money and we're losing money that we don't have. (laughs) That was a huge, huge fear issue that I had to overcome. And it got to the place where I was like, I'm too afraid to try anyone else because we're going to lose money and we can't, we don't even have money. <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. Now, the, the Bible does talk about this, um, about risk taking. Cause that's really what you're doing is you're going out there and you're, you're taking a chance by faith. You're trying to do something. Um, Ecclesiastes 11, four through six talks about he that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. And this is what he tells us. He says, in the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand, for thou knowest not whither shall prosper, either this or that, or whither both shall be alike good. What God is telling us here is it it doesn't matter. Like if you really stop and and try to calculate, this is what I'm going to lose here and this is what I'm going to lose there, it's, it's too overwhelming. You won't do it. But if you follow what the scripture says, it says, don't, don't regard it. Just go out and sow your seed. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1, 9 talks about, have I not commanded you be strong and of a good courage Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed for the Lord your God is with thee wherever so thou goest. Failure will overtake you if you let it. And the key here is that if you're taking a risk, you're going to at some point meet with failure. But the key is to just not let that failure define you. When we lost all that money with those those manufacturers, like I talked to you about, it was so debilitating and I was done. And I remember specifically sitting in my sewing room, which doubled as my office, and praying. I'm like, what do we do? And I really felt impressed. I'm like, you need to try just one more time. I was like, fine, fine. We'll try just one more time. And I remember to this day going to my husband and telling him, Austin, we're going to try one more time. Like it doesn't matter that we have all these failures behind us. We're going to try one more time. And what I did 
that day is I went to my computer and I did a search on the internet for quotes on success, quotes on failure, and articles on failure and success. And I literally talked to myself saying all these things that you find out there about what failure is and, and how not to let it define you. Um, there's a few here. Those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. There's no secrets to success. It's the results of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. The next thing that I had to overcome was doubt. And this doubt came from a few sources. So I had self-doubt. And this is me talking to myself. And this is not a positive thing to do, but it happened. And it was, why would anyone buy from me? Who do I think I am? And why would my ideas be any good? Those are so negative. Like, you shouldn't talk to yourself that way. Yeah. On the other hand, I felt like I was experiencing doubt from others. And by others, it could be a voiced doubt that someone had expressed or it could be a perceived doubt that I thought, I thought, how silly is that? I thought someone else had a thought. Mm -hmm. And that was so debilitating that these people, you, you, when you start worrying about, oh, what are all these people saying? What are all these people, what are they going to do if I do this? You can't do that. If you are always waiting for the approval of others, you will never accomplish anything. The Bible has something to say about this too. Galatians 1.10 says, Do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So basically it's saying if you're, all you're trying to do is please men, that you're really not following God like you should be. Yeah. Um, Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Because really in the end, JC, it doesn't matter what people think. If God has told you to do something or if it's the will of God and you're being true to yourself, you need to do it. There was um, a few quotes that I found on, on this that I really liked and I've included them here. It says, if your self-worth is gained from others, you will forever need approval when in reality, all you need is to trust yourself. So this is by Leon Brown. I don't really like that last part very much because I feel like you need to trust God mm -hmm. and you need to be true to yourself, not necessarily just trusting yourself. I feel like that would bring you to fault if you just trusted yourself. Mm -hmm. This other one is constantly needing the affirmation and approval of others will only slow you down and it will further undermine your confidence. The third thing that I had to really work to overcome was, um, was sadness and grief. And that might sound a little, <laughs> a little crazy, um, but it happens anytime you're in business, something, something negative is going to happen. That's going to cause you grief. To me, this, this part that I'm going to talk about was, um, very traumatic for me. Um, so I talked about the time when we were, custom sewing, and then we were looking for manufacturers. So there's a little space of time in there. And this is the story of the space in between the two times there. So what happened is that our business was really taken off. And I had so many people contacting me with custom orders. Um, I was staying up all night sewing and still not getting all my stuff done. And then I was getting up or not going to bed, staying up and taking care of my daughter the next day. And then add on top of that financial troubles, because at this point we hadn't lost all the money from the, from the manufacturers, but my husband's still in the Christian education and I'm not working at the hospital. So we don't always have enough to make ends meet. So there's a financial stressor right there. And at the time, the workload of everything that was going on was really overwhelming to me. I wasn't managing it very well at all. So we found out some very happy news in this time. I was expecting our second baby. And you know this because you have two kids. Like just the feelings that you have when you find out that you are going to have a baby. And, you know, you start making all these plans. And 
just trying to think what you're going to name it. You name it. Like you, you start doing all these things and that's what we we're doing. Now, mind you, everything's going on. Like I just talked to you about. So it's a super stressful time. Yeah. And it's my second baby. So, <laughs> you know, you probably know this too. Second babies and third babies, they don't really get the care. The first one does. So <laughs> <laughs> it's different for sure. It is. So I didn't even call the doctor till I was like 12 or 13 weeks, I think. And then I got right in to have my appointment. And it was like 13 weeks that I was when we went into the doctor for um, the first ultrasound. And I remember sitting in the room and the ultrasound started doing the ultrasound and I knew something was wrong. It was very traumatic. Um, as a nurse, because I am a nurse, I do have some knowledge of like ultrasounds. I'm not an expert by any means, but I could tell on the ultrasound that there wasn't a heartbeat. Mm. But at the same time, like you didn't, I didn't want to believe it. I'm like, I don't want to believe it. Like I kind of look at the, you know, you look at the tech, you're like, okay, how are they acting? I'm like, she's not acting good. So it's my worst fear and our baby's yeah. dead. And she walked out of the room. She didn't really say much. And I turned to my husband and I said, our baby's dead. And it was a, a super, super traumatic time emotionally mm -hmm. and physically for me. We don't know exactly what caused the baby to die. But I do know that the stress I was under was not healthy. And there was a lot of guilt that was associated with that when I thought that I had been the one to kill my baby. And so we, we, at this time we closed down, we closed down custom orders. Cause I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. Like the price was too high. So when, when I was talking to you earlier about like all the negatives that you experience in a business, this was one of them. And you're going to experience it at some point in your, your career with your business, at some point, it may not be the same story I have, but at some point you're going to experience this. And, and the trick is just to learn how to correctly deal with all these negatives, because if you let it, it will derail you from reaching your goal. Yeah. Wow. Chantel, thank you so much for sharing that. That was so vulnerable, but beautiful at the same time. And I can't even imagine just, I know the stress of having a business and you have those demands on your life. And then for something to happen outside of that, that's affecting your body, that's affecting your family, something so personal, personal, and it's everything coming together. All your different worlds are colliding in that moment. And usually when those, those worlds collide, we do have to make some difficult decisions. Like you said, you had to take a break from custom orders, which I have done as well. That can be really demanding. And it's just looking at yourself and realizing that you need to do something to help your health and to help you go through this, this season that's very difficult. Let's go to the other end. And why don't you share how you've seen God work through Nuggles. Now that you have the business established and you have gone through that difficult season and you're, out, you're on the other side, what have you seen God do through the business? So I have seen God use us to do a lot of different things that I would never in my wildest dreams have imagined. Um, we, when we started our business, like I said, we had no money. And so one of the things, one of the reasons why we started our business was because we wanted to have the financial means to be a blessing to someone else when they needed it. We remember so many times sitting in services when we'd have missionaries or just whoever come by and they would take up a special offering. And my husband and I would look at each other like, well, we'll pray for you because we don't even have enough for ourselves. Like, I'm not sure what we can give. Yeah. Um, and so we took that and we're like, we want to get something that we can pass on and give to others. And so that's been one of our goals. And for there for a while, we made it like a monthly goal. Let's do something every month where we give to someone. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to be careful in this because I don't, I know there's that verse in the Bible that talks about take heed that you do not your charitable deeds before men. So not, not whatsoever am I toot my own horn, but just, this is to answer your question. There has been many times when we were able to write a check to um, whatever church or whatever, whatever the need was, we were able to do that. And there's been times when my husband and I would think of an amount separately and then we would look at each other. And it's so funny because like we thought of the exact same amount. And sometimes I didn't want to say what I was thinking and he didn't want to say what he was thinking because we thought it was too much. But Mm -hmm. it's crazy how you can go from so little to having enough to give. And it's been one of our prayers. I have prayed so many times. I'm like, God, I don't want money for myself. I don't want possessions for myself. What I want to be is a funnel. I want you to be able to bless me. And on the other hand, I want to be dumping out those blessings on someone else. And I have seen it so many times. There's so many things running through my mind right now, just different people. Um, there's been times we've known of someone like that had a house fire that lost everything that they owned. And we had someone reach out to us. Could you could you do something for them? And yeah, we can't do a whole lot. Like we can't give you a whole wardrobe, but we can do something. There was one just recently, we were at a conference and there was this girl that was shopping with us and she, she shopped with us several times. And she told me the story that she had lost her stroller. Someone had stole it. And I didn't get the impression that she could go out and buy another one if she needed it. And I felt prompted. <laughs> You need to give her your stroller. Now, mind you, we're at a conference and I need my stroller for my baby. And um, I kept having that thought. And so I went to my husband. I said, hey, can I give that lady my stroller? And he just looked at me. He's like, if that's what you feel like you need to do, do it. And so I went and cleaned all my stuff out. And I waited till she was all the way down the, the hallway. And I said, Hey, I want you to have my stroller. And she looked at me in shock, <laughs> which I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. And she's like, what? I said, no, I want you to have my stroller. And she literally just lost it. And she was with her, I think mom and um, aunt, I'm not positive, but we were all boohooing because it, following that prompting and, and being able to be a blessing to someone else Like there's no feeling quite like it. And you don't do it for personal gratification, but you do it just because, just because you show (laughs) it. And it was amazing to me in that moment. And that's just one of the instances that I can think of recently, but there's been so many times that things have happened that I know God has been able to bless other people and work through our business simply because we do have a business. That's incredible. And that's so cool. She must have been so excited. (laughs) She was. I would have flipped too. That's just so cool because nobody does that anymore. Do you know what I mean? And so like when God is prompting you to do that, number one, usually we don't think those things on our own. Let's just be real. Sometimes we can kind of be self-focused just because of what our needs are in the moment. Not saying we're not going to be kind or we're not going to be helpful, but usually it's those thoughts that come we're like okay this probably is from God right now because it's probably not something I would normally do but at the same time we just know that at the end of the day he's going to get the glory and Mm -hmm. they're going to get blessed and that's really all that matters and you'll figure out how to get a new stroller you know a different time that's not really the important thing you know And I love that. And I love that you did that because it's such a demonstration of Jesus, of his love. And I, I love that. I love that so much. And I do agree that when you have a business, it definitely feels so good to be a funnel and to just bless other people. Um, Of course, it is awesome to help out your, your home and your spouse and, you know, to kind of contribute. That's, that's amazing too. I've done that as well. Seeing as my husband is, you know, uh, has the, the main job there um, that brings in the money. Um, but I do love being able to say, hey, like, let me treat us to pizza one night, you know, so it's not yes. of that budget or, 
hey, you know, like we were, I forgot where we were, but we were somewhere and I could bless, you know, a niece or, or a friend of mine if they wanted a little treat and just something that will just make somebody else feel good, you know? Yes. Yes. I completely agree with you. Well, so you were talking about past insecurities and past fears that you have and how you had to push past that. And now that the business is established and you feel more confident, can you share a piece of advice for someone who is a Christian who also maybe has these ideas of they want to bless other people, they want to be a funnel as well, but they also want to start their own business and they want to do something creative? What advice would you give them? So this I feel so passionately about. You should be a Christian first. And I'm very adamant about that. Like it, it's kind of a no, no brainer, like, well, duh. But in yeah. every area of your life, you should be a Christian. But especially when you're a business owner, um, owning your own business opens so many doors and you have so many exposures to secular businesses as well. And I feel like a lot of times the worldview that a secular business has is not very aligned with what the Bible says a lot of times. And so sometimes you'll see that bleed over into the Christian business. And what you have to do is say, you know what, in in these areas, I don't care what the secular world's doing. I want to be a Christian first. You know, we're in this world. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Even though you're in the world, don't be conformed to this world. And I wanted to put this in right here. I am a huge advocate for other Christians to do well. If that means starting their own business or going to college and pursuing a career that way, or even being a mother or or whatever it is in life that someone feels like they are called to do. I am such a big advocate of them doing it well. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why. JC, what are the words we want to hear Jesus say when we get to heaven? Well done. Yes, well done. Yeah. Like Jesus didn't say, oh, you did an okay job or you, Mm -hmm. you, that's a mediocre and okay, I guess you did enough to get past. He said, well done. I looked up the definition of well done. It means something that's carried out successfully or satisfactory. So that means for us to hear well done, we're going to have to carry out our tasks successfully and satisfactory. And that has a whole impetus. If you really stop and think about that, like sometimes we get so lost in our daily tasks that we think, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to get through because I just got to get through. And that's not the mindset you should have at all. It doesn't matter if you're in school, if, if it's just a kid at home, if it's a mom, whatever it is in life, you should do it to the best of your ability. And on the flip side of that, talking about all these other people owning their own businesses and, and being, and being a Christian, if if they have to hear well done to make it to heaven, like I have to hear well done, why would I not want them to do well? And why would I not want them to be successful? Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that actually is something that we really do need to ask ourselves a lot because I think when we are on the outside looking in, when somebody has a business or they're doing things that we want to do, we get a little jealous. We do. We get that kind of, why can't that be me? Or they have what I want. And it's our flesh that we have to battle. But we have to push past that. And we should wish them well. We should want them to do well. Mm -hmm. So talking about motherhood, I always tease that there never really is a balance of anything. But we find the flow. I try and use that word now because it kind of makes a little (laughs) bit more, it makes more sense. Balance, I don't know if that that word even fits anymore, but what does your flow look like between business owner and motherhood? Because they're kind of intertwined, you know? They are very intricately intertwined. So first off, I have a terrible personality type for motherhood. 
And the reason why is I'm a very, very task oriented person. I have to complete everything on my list before I allow myself to relax. And if you have kids, which you do, you know that that doesn't work. If you, no. especially if you're home <laughs> with them, they interrupt you all the time and they need stuff all the time. Yeah. And a lot of times my work list doesn't get done. And for me, that's that it, it, I have to work a lot on that because it really, it demotivates me and it makes me upset when my list isn't done. Um, I would say there's not a flow like you were just talking about. I don't even know if flow is the right word. For <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's the opposite of the flow? Like going against the current because that is what you're doing. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that could work too for sure. <laughs> One of the things that I've learned is that it takes a village. And I have a wonderful village. I have my mom and she's very rarely worked outside the home. And so I can call her at a moment notice. I have a wonderful mother-in-law that I can call up and my siblings. And there's friends that we can call on, which I hope everyone has a village. And if you don't, you should find people who can be your village. Um, but what, another thing that I've learned too, is that my children are my priority. And this is this is something I have to work on a lot because you get lost sometimes in the tasks and think that I need to complete these before I take care of my children. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Bible talks about, you know, the scripture training up the child in the way he should go. But not only that, we only have so much time with our children and I don't want to waste it trying to get my to-do list done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. And I think maybe it's because I have my hands in a lot of different things. I'm multi-passionate. I'm a list person, so I'll write my list. And then, of course, you know, questions happen. People need things. <laughs> uh, I homeschool my boys, and I love it. I love being home. I love being available. But this past year, yeah, the same. I've learned to know who I am, how I am, and how they still need the best version of myself. They don't need a, you know, grumpy mommy all the time because <laughs> I, I've had that thought. I'm like, how, first of all, I'm the only woman in the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have two boys and a husband. So I'm outnumbered. Even the guinea pig is a boy. And I just say, you know what, how would he feel about Christian women if he always sees his mommy upset or angry shouldn't oh. she be happy or full of joy i've had that thought in my head and i feel like it's the lord correcting me about my behavior because it's tied to my like to-do list and if i get everything accomplished on my list sure i feel good but then i realize oh but then there's a different list a mommy list and i didn't really go through that as much and so i totally understand and i love that you were talking about we don't have that much time left because it shouldn't be looked at as like a negative thing. It should be just a reality check. And I think we need that. I think we really do need a reality check. Um, especially if we are Christians and we are business, business owners and we are mothers. It's a lot of things on our plate. And I think we can steward it well as long as we are Christians first. And I do appreciate that you said that because that is super important. And I would say the same thing. Be a Christian first. <laughs> So what would you say to the mama who is creative but is finding it very hard to have the time to tap into that part of her life right now, being in the trenches of everyday motherhood? So if you have kids, I'm probably talking your language, but if you don't have kids, this probably none of it makes sense to you. But we are all in a season of life. and. My season of life right now is very chaotic. It's very stressful. But we know this. Seasons don't last forever. I think sometimes we get so entrenched in just the everyday life of trying to, trying to just make it to the next day that we forget and we get overwhelmed. You're like, when is this ever going to end? It's just a season. I've heard this um, little saying so many times, and it's so true. It says the days are long, but the years are so short. 
I think one of the things that moms need to hear is that it's okay. It's okay if you don't get your to-do list done. It's okay if you don't have time for everything on your list, including yourself. I know I was listening to one of your podcasts um, from not too long ago with Nicole Christ, who talked about how important it is for self-care. And she is so right. Self-care is so important. But I'm just going to be honest. As a mom and a business owner, I put myself last a lot of times. And I believe, I 100% believe what she was saying. It is so important to take that time for yourself. But right now in the season of life I'm in, I don't have the time for myself like I would like to. And, it, and if you let it, you can put a lot of um, condemnation and a lot of um, pressure on yourself saying, why aren't you taking the time for that? And I think sometimes as a mom, all I need to hear is, it's okay. Like you don't have to get all the way down to the bottom of your list and you don't have to even address self-care. You're in a season and this season will end very, very soon. I have some suggestions like you, you mentioned trying to tap into that creative part of our life when we're so busy. Um, You can employ creative things all throughout your life. It's really just a matter of trying to find something and just making it creative. Um, Suggestion I had would be doing like a date night because obviously your spouse should be on your to-do list. And if your spouse isn't, they need to be, they need to be a priority. And mine needs to be moved up a little bit farther up the list sometimes, but same. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have the suggestion, a date night. I like a paint studio. We went and sat outside one not too long ago and like these people were painting and I was like, that would be so much fun to do together as a couple. I know my kids are always wanting to do crafts, like literally all the time. And so that is a creative outlet for me. Cooking sometimes can be a creative outlet as well. Because um, even trying like new recipes, that I know it's not like, oh, that's super creative. But yes, it's creative because it's not something that you normally do. Make sugar cookies, decorate them with your kids. You can make that super fun. Yeah, I agree. You have to incorporate, incorporate creativity in your life right now, like what you're doing right now. And if I didn't have a podcast and art and all this other stuff, that's that's something that I'm blessed to be able to have time to do and that I make time, but it's not an everyday thing that I'm working on it. I think that's the other thing is too, is we kind of buy into the lie. Like we have to make time every day to do something creative towards our business. And sometimes that's not true if you have kids. Uh, So you, I literally do things for my business Yes, I'm talking to people answering emails probably like once a day, but that's something totally different. And that's like a very short time. But as far as like being creative, uh, maybe like two or three times a week, you know, because I am getting on the floor and being creative with my youngest because he's obsessed with Legos now and he knows mommy's an artist. So mommy, can you make this Lego, (laughs) all these Legos look like Mario or all his characters? And so, you know. That's so I have a question here. Can you make Mario out of Legos? I can. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pinterest. But he sees, he sees that I'm capable of following instructions. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, or different things like that. My oldest loves to bake. He, he has the biggest sweet tooth. So we'll we'll bake together or you know just go outside and have fun and and create a game or something but there are different things that you can do to be creative and I know usually people you know like moms want to be creative for themselves Mm -hmm. and that's going to look different for everybody and yeah we can't we can't compare and it all depends on on you know your schedule and like you said this season is so short so we really need to just be tr- try and be as present as we can. And I know that's something that I'm working on as well. So right now, Nuggles is pretty successful. I, I, I've watched you. I've followed you. And it's so exciting. So how does that make you feel looking back at the entire process 
everything that you've gone through, all the emotions, and seeing what the company is today. I am so thankful. Literally, I can't put it into words. I've had so many moments in recent weeks and months where I have just sat down and cried and said, God, why were you so good to me? Like, I don't deserve it. None of us deserve it. But God has been so good. And, and literally the feelings that I get sometimes are just overwhelming. And if I, if I would have known when I started my business, what I know today, I wouldn't have started it. I wouldn't have taken the first step because it's so overwhelming what I have today. But you know, this is the goodness of God. God doesn't just hand you a successful business, hand you whatever. He gives you just a little piece of it. And he says, here you go, Chantel. This is your piece. What are you going to do with it? And it really is up to you how that piece gets colored and what it becomes. And when you're done with that piece, God will give you the next one. And pretty soon you have kind of a picture that takes place. And like I said, when I am looking right now at the picture that God has painted in my life, I am overwhelmed and I am so thankful. What a blessing. That is so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's so encouraging. It's very encouraging to us listening. I know it's encouraging to me. It's very inspiring because I think when we are looking at people who seem to have quote unquote made it, which we know there's never an end, it's all a process. But when we are looking at people and they seem to be very successful, it's so easy for us to compare our beginning to their middle or just compare the way that things go and almost have kind of that self-doubt like you were talking about. And when you just hear somebody be real about the process, it's just so encouraging because it lets us know that God can do that for us too. And that we can get past our own insecurities, our own emotional trials, our own battles, whatever, whatever kind of comes at, a, at us, we can be overcomers because God really does want us to succeed and he really does want what's best for us. And so I'm just so thankful that, you know, you've been open and you've been able to just share your heart with us today. And that leads me to the subject of modesty. I really want to touch on this for a little bit. Can you share with me why modesty is so important to you and to our culture? So I'm struggling a little bit with this question because I feel like it should be a no-brainer. <clears throat> mm. Modesty is important because it's in the Bible. First um, Timothy 2.9 talks about in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair, gold pearls, or costly array. So I did a definition search on the word modest. Because like I said to me, it's like, well, duh. But modest means dressing or behaving so as to avoid impropriety or indecency especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. So this was interesting. When I was looking up this definition, the word indecency, one of the synonyms for that was pornography. And to me, that was kind of like, whoa, like, okay, so take, take out those other words and put pornography in here. So if I'm supposed to draw, dress in a modest apparel, that is dressing or behaving so as to avoid pornography. Yeah. especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cut and dry. I know there's a lot of like variations in like different standards for different people. And that really is based on where you are in life and who your pastor is and what you believe. And I, I'm not talking about that whatsoever, but I'm talking about just a modesty, not just in your apparel, but it, it talks about being modest in your behavior as well. Not only that, like we are the body or the temple of Christ. 
First Corinthians 6, 19 talks about, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that God bought you with a price? He paid a really heavy price for me. He paid a really heavy price for you, for everyone. And why in the world would you want to put something on your body that's going to glorify your body? Because that's what it is. Um, these people, that they'll make clothes that like accentuate different parts of a, a, of a woman's body. And what it's doing is it's causing, it's causing that part of the body to be glorified and for people to look at that and to lust after that when that's not what it should be. Because if we're the temple of God, we should want to glorify God, not glorify our bodies. Amen. Chantel, she just took us to church. Uh, <laughs> No, I really do appreciate this. I appreciate your research. I appreciate your heart. Because for me, I wasn't born in the church. I've been in church probably 12 years now, 12 and a half years. And this is a huge subject for me. And this is one of the reasons why I created the Modest Fashion Coloring Book, because I thought there are no, there's nothing out there for little girls to color that's modest. And That's so true you know, uh, God has really opened the door for me to um, take that a little further. But for me, it's definitely something that takes the spotlight off of what is good and puts it on yourself and makes you feel like you're somebody special. And not saying that we're not, but it makes you feel like you're like this superstar. You're like the center of attention. And that's it's that attitude that like Jezebel kind of type spirit that God really doesn't want for his daughters. And so I really do appreciate you breaking it down that way because I think so many times we struggle with this. And usually when we look at a life who kind of leaves the church or gets far from God, one of the first things they leave is modesty. And I think there's something to be said about that because that's submission to God. That's submitting your flesh and what you kind of feel like you want to do or how you want to dress. You know, like, oh, I'm in charge of my body. I'm in charge of how I dress. Well, that attitude is really not biblical, right? True. So I really do appreciate you talking about that because I think it's so important for us to just be careful and to know exactly what the Bible says about that and what God expects of his daughters. So let's talk a little bit about your items. I really love everything that you do. I think they're fun. I think they're different and original. I feel like when I see one of your items, I'm like, oh, that's a Nuggles right there. Like, <laughs> like that's a Nuggles item, in my, in my opinion, because it, it's crafted a special way. And... I want to know what has been your best-selling item and why do you think people love it so much? So this is really a toss-up for me. Um, the, probably the two top items that we sell are our three-quarter layering t-shirts and then our, our midi skirts. So our t-shirts, well, both of them actually, I feel like a lot of people love our price points. One of our goals when starting the business was to be affordable and we have done our absolute best to stay within a price range that we feel like anyone can afford. Um, on the t-shirts, the fabric that we selected for that, we went through so many fabrics trying to find just the right one. And I'm kind of a fabric snob. <laughs> it just has to be just right. It has to be comfy or I don't like it. And so this was one of the fabrics that I finally found and it's a little more expensive. So we do pay more money for it, but it's a wonderful fabric. It washes well and it wears well. I've had one of these t-shirts for several years and it, I mean, you can tell it's a little older, but it, it still looks pretty good for being a few years old. I think another thing that people like about it is just the modesty. Like it, it does have a modest neckline and it is a modest sleeve length where you're, if, if that's what you're wanting, you don't have to wear several items underneath to get the modesty that you're trying to get. With our midi skirts, I say some of the same things about that, the fabric. We went through a long process to finally find the fabric that we got. And I love it because it does not ball up when you wash it. There's nothing so frustrating as getting something and paying money for it, wearing it once or twice, and then having it look like it's a few years old. Yeah. So I would say those are probably our top two best-selling items. 
That's really exciting to hear because I've been eyeing those layering shirts for a very long time. I have it saved in my Instagram under fashion so that when I come into a little bit of money, I will be splurging on those layering <laughs> because it's an essential item in your closet. It really is. It is. And I think once you buy one, you'll buy another one. We've had so many people that come back just because they love them so much. I'm sure. I'm sure I'm going to want every color that you have. <laughs> Well, Chantel, it really has been such a pleasure talking with you and getting to know you and hearing your heart. And I'm so thankful for you. I'm so glad that God has brought us together. I think this was really a special conversation and I know people will be blessed when they hear it. So can you just take some time to please share with everybody listening where they can buy from Nuggles and where they can follow you on social media? So the best way to get to our products is to go to our website, which is www.nuggles, which is spelled N-U-G-G-L-E-S dot U-S. And you can click on the shop link and we have everything there. If you have social media, you can follow us on Instagram at nuggles dot U-S. And if you have Facebook, our handle is Nuggles Clothing. Thank you so much, Chantel. I'm so glad that you were on the podcast today. Thank you, JC. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Ministries? It will encourage me that you were blessed. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. To learn more about Hello Awesome, head to helloawesomeministries.com. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.